Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make a whiteboard animation in Apple Motion. People love whiteboard animations. I think it's because they wanna make explainer videos but not have to be on camera or shoot anything. So I get a lot of requests from clients for whiteboard animations and I think it's because on my main channel, those are some of the platforms I talk about and review. If you want like a dedicated software for making whiteboard animations, I can make a recommendation to you. I'll link a video below. But if you don't wanna to have to pay for another platform or learn another platform, you can do it in Apple Motion. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. I'm gonna show you kind of like the medium uh, difficulty way to make a whiteboard animation. Then I'm gonna show you a really down and dirty shortcut. And then I'm gonna show you how to do a more advanced technique if you have a very detailed image you're trying to draw in like very realistically. So let's just dive right into it. Okay, for our medium difficulty tutorial, let's just get started here. Let's go over to the generators tab and let's grab a color solid and drop it into our project pane. And I'm going to hit the inspector button and make this background pure white. Okay, next you're gonna need a line drawing that you're gonna be drawing on. I'm just gonna use this really simple paper airplane. So if you've seen a whiteboard animation, you know that this hand kind of comes up into the frame and draws on our illustration. So we wanna make this paper airplane look like someone's writing it on. So to do that is really simple. I'm going to head down to the center of my screen, grab this drop down and hit the Bezier tool. And then I'm just going to click edit points in the order in which someone might draw this paper airplane on. So let's just do this. And now that we've gotten to our paper airplane, let's be a little more strategic with how you might draw this on. I'm going to create some edit points outside of my illustration. So the hand kind of follows this motion path and then starts drawing at the tip. Basically your goal is to cover all of these black lines with this red line. So you can see here, I might wanna make some adjustments around the curve of our path from the paper airplane. I'm gonna zoom in a little. And because this is a rounder shape, I'm going to right click on this edit point, make it smooth and then I get more of a curvature that I can adjust with these handles. And if I wanna add a point, you can see there's sort of a bend here in the edge of this paper airplane. I can just right click and hit add point and then add my point to make sure I'm covered on that line. Okay, so I've covered all of my lines for my paper airplane. I'm just gonna click the paper airplane layer and then above it pops this BZA. So now we've got this thick yellow line covering our paper airplane. I'm gonna head over to the inspector window and I'm gonna dial down the width of this line. What I want to accomplish is have the skinniest line possible while still covering my line drawing. So I like this, this is pretty skinny. I'm just gonna make some adjustments here with my control points to really fine tune and make sure I'm really getting all the coverage I want. Okay, great. Now we wanna stay selected on the BZA in the project pane. Let's head up to the top of the screen, hit behaviors, drop down, go down to shape and select right on. And now our BZA has disappeared. Uh, if you look at our timeline, our playhead is at the very beginning of our timeline. And if we scrub, you can see the path that our BZA line takes. Now what we wanna do is conceal this BZA line and use it as a path for this airplane to draw on. So to do that, we're gonna select the paper airplane image in our project pane. We're gonna head on up to object and add image mask. Now in our inspector window, we get this box for the mask source. I'm gonna to go to my project pane. I'm gonna take my BZA layer I'm gonna click, hold down my mouse and drag it and drop it in that box. And now our airplane has disappeared. But if I scrub along the timeline, there it is, it's drawn on. All right, so this is taking quite some time to draw on. What I can do is head on down to my timeline. See this purple bar that's kind of grayed out? That is our right on behavior. We can make this action happen faster by grabbing the edge of the bar and dragging it shorter. Let me play that back in real time. 
Okay, I think it could go even faster. Now the next thing you need to do is add in our hand. Now you're gonna have to source the image of the hand. They are everywhere online. They're not hard to find. And there's different types of hands. There's cartoons, there's male hands, female hands, and then also holding different types of writing implements. So you want something that kind of is gonna look like it could make this thick black line. Or if it's like a pencil drawing, you want someone holding a pencil, just kind of keep that in mind when you're finding your hand. I'm just gonna drag and drop my hand over my paper airplane. And the first thing I'm going to do is set my anchor point to the tip of this marker. This is a very important step. So what I'm going to do is go down to my transform tool menu here, or I can just right click and select anchor point. And now I get this cursor here in my canvas. And what I want to do is take this little blue dot and, and place it right over the tip of my marker. I can't just grab it though. I got to use these arrows to steer the blue dot where I want it to be. Now what I need to do is add a motion path to this hand. So we're going to make sure we're selected on it on the project pane, go up to behaviors, basic motion, and select motion path. Now let me zoom out on my canvas so you can see what the default is. The default is this left to right action. Obviously that's not what we want. Let's select motion path in our timeline, head on up to the inspector, and the first thing we wanna look at is path shape. We're gonna drop it down to and turn it to geometry. And again, we get this shape source box. We're gonna drag the same thing, our BZA line from the project pane into the source box. And look at that, our hand follows the path. However, you see that it's happening too slow for the animation. That is because we need to make the motion path length, duration, and the write-on duration in our timeline, pretty much the same. So I'm just gonna drag that bar to match. Let's play it back and see how it looks. Okay, that looks great, but what I am noticing is that after the animation finishes, the hand just stays at the point of the airplane. That's obviously not what we want. So we can still make corrections to our motion path. It's really simple. Let me draw your attention back to the project pane. I'm gonna turn on the BZA layer and I'm gonna right click on the canvas and select edit points. And now I can see my points again. I'm going to zoom in. And what I need to do is find the last keyframe that we made. So what I'm going to do is run my mouse right below that edit point. I'm going to right click on my mouse, hit add point, and then I'm going to take our old point and move it down out of the frame. I'm going to take this last point I just made and reposition it. So now the hand is going to go out of frame. We could turn off our BZA and then I'm going to click anywhere in my canvas so I'm not seeing those edit points. All right, there you have it. There's a medium level difficulty whiteboard animation. Next up, I'm gonna show you a really down and dirty trick if you're just trying to do something really quick. So here we are again in Apple Motion. I've got my color solid background here. This time, let me just drop in a logo so you can see how that works. And we're pretty much going to do the same thing, but instead of having the motion path be really custom to the image. Another option you could do is go back to your BZA tool and just do sort of this quick zigzag pattern. And we're just gonna play with the points to make sure we're covered. I'm gonna leave the line here nice and wide and the same steps as before. We're gonna add a right on. We're gonna shrink that right on down. We're going to add an image mask to our logo object add image mask. We're going to drop in our BZA. There you go. We're going to bring in our hand above our logo, set the anchor point, head on up to behaviors, basic motion, motion path, change in the inspector window, the path shape from open spline to geometry, drop in that BZA. And in this case, when you're shading things in, if you're gonna do it really down and dirty, I say faster motion is better. Okay, and for our final illustration, I'm gonna show you how to really get into the nitty gritty with the more detailed 
animation, this one takes a little longer, um, but if you're really trying to do a wow factor with an animation, then I think you're gonna like this a lot. So we're gonna start with this seagull. Now, I do realize this is not a very detailed looking drawing, but the technique I'm gonna show you can be highlighted with this drawing because the challenge we have here is some really thin lines and then some really fat lines here with the seagull. So if you were going to try to tackle something much more detailed, chances are you would have that same kind of variation in line widths in your line drawing. And I'm gonna show you how to achieve the right on effect with that kind of image. So the first thing we're gonna do is start drawing in these thinner lines with my BZA tool. And in trying to do a more detailed image, you wanna be much more precise with your edit points. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you let me know by giving me a thumbs up, hitting that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. So I made all my edit points. I'm just gonna click any layer in my project pane to get that BZA line to show up. And here it is, it's very chubby looking. So let's head on over to shape in my inspector window and let's dial down that line width to be really, really thin. Okay, I want it to be as thin as I can get it without exposing any of our lines that we were trying to conceal. So now that I have gotten it down to a width of 12 points. I'm gonna do a little more fine tuning here with these lines. Okay, I'm happy with that. And you know what comes next? We're gonna add our behavior. So go up to behaviors, shape, and right on. And I'm going to shrink down the right on bar in my timeline. Okay, that looks good to me. Okay, so we've done our thinner line. Now I wanna go back in and shade in the wider lines in this illustration. So we need to add a second BZA in order to do this. So I'm going to head over to my BZA tool and now I'm gonna start clicking away on the tips of the bird's wings and tail, beak and eye. Okay, and there is our next BZA line. I'm going to draw my attention to the width on this one as well. I'm gonna dial it down some, but we're gonna keep it pretty wide. I'm going to head on down to my timeline, make sure that BZA starts right after the right on ends on our first BZA. I'm gonna go up to behaviors, shape, right on. So this one's gonna write on as well. And again, I'm going to shrink down the duration of the right on. Now what we need to do is draw our attention to the project pane. I'm gonna select my two BZAs by holding down my command key while I select each of them. I'm gonna right click and group them together. That's a very important step. Now I'm going to select my seagull image. I'm gonna go up to object, add image mask, and in the mask source, I'm going to drag my entire group. Very important step. Now let's see how this looks. And now the next step is just to add the hand, but this is where things get a little more complicated. Let me grab that hand image. I'm gonna drop it in above my BZA group so it's outside of the group. And again, of course, you know we need to add our anchor point. Now you would think that we would just add our motion path and drop in our group of BZAs into the source window on our motion path like we did for the other two uh, drawings that we completed, but that actually doesn't work in Apple Motion. You can't have multiple motion paths on one object in Apple Motion, which is frustrating, but I have a workaround for you. So what we're going to do is head on up to our project pane, select our hand. We're going to go to behaviors, basic motion, motion path. Again, change it to geometry. And let me just show you here, if I try to grab the group, it doesn't work, nothing's moving, right? So that's not going to work. Instead, let's change the group to the actual BZA, the first BZA we created with the thin line. And now we're on to something. So obviously this action is happening too slow, just like before. So I'm going to take my motion path and I'm gonna change the duration to match the right on effect. 
Okay, but now what, right? The action just freezes, which is clearly not what we want. I'm going to head on down to the timeline. I'm gonna queue up my playhead to right after the motion path action finishes. I'm gonna make sure I'm selected on my hand. And then I'm going to head up to edit in my tab and hit split. Now what I've got is two versions of my hand in my timeline and in my project pane. So what I want to do is click anywhere else in my timeline. So neither of those hands is selected. And then I am going to select the second version of our hand here. Now, if you look, there still is a motion path attached to this hand. So we're just going to drag it over to where we want it to be underneath our new hand. You see that? So they are aligned, but we need to change the properties of this motion path because it's matching our skinny line, not our fat line. So we're gonna select that motion path, head on over to our inspector window, and we're gonna grab the second BZA and drag it into that source box. And now it's following that path. And we wanna change the duration of that motion path to match the right on of the BZA. Okay, there you go, guys. That is how I would approach a more detailed drawing the headlines of varying widths. Um, and if you think you're going to be doing a lot of whiteboard animations, I would suggest investing in a dedicated platform. Like I said, I have a video below where I talk about one that I actually think works pretty well. But if you're not doing a ton of them, Apple Motion is a great place to knock them out once in a while. And you can get super creative with this. You can like color in the drawings. You can incorporate live action video. There's, you know, it's pretty limitless what you can do with this technique. So if you enjoyed this video, let me know by giving me that thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell. If you want to push notification to let you know whenever I post a new video, I really appreciate you watching this, you guys. I will see you again.